Okay, away we go. Um, we are being recorded, guys, so uh, let me do a quick little round of introductions this morning. Uh, my name is Mark Sodkowski. I'm the president of Sales for Rapid Scale. Thank you very much for joining our monthly webinar. Today is going to be a great webinar as we are going over some recent wins and case studies that we hope will help all of our attendees and our sales partners out there, you know, think a little bit outside of the box, find out where we are a good fit, where cloud in general is a good fit today, which is pretty much everywhere. Um, so with, without further ado, Ms. Stephanie Ryan, our Director of Marketing, is not with me today, but I have Ms. Summer Fagone. Summer is our content manager here at Rapid Scale, and she is on the marketing team. Several of you may have worked with Summer in the past. She will be fielding our questions today, and um, please, if you have questions, go ahead and use the control bar to type your questions in, and we'll get them answered for you. A little bit of housekeeping, as always. The presentation is being recorded. It will be up on the partner portal within 24 hours, so you'll have access to go and review it if you'd like. And then everyone who's on the call today, we will be getting out a copy of the presentation to all of you today so that you have it at your fingertips. With that being said, I hope everybody had a wonderful Independence Day vacation, got a couple extra days off, enjoyed barbecue and family and friends and, of course, our country's uh, independence. So hopefully you all are getting recharged and ready to go. And without further ado, let's kind of get it rolling into what we're here to do today. And let's hope that uh, what we're here to do today is going to work. No technical difficulties. Uh-oh. There we go. Um, so our first, our first case study today, guys, is about a pharmaceutical company that we brought on board in the last quarter. Um, this pharmaceutical company is up in the great state of Washington out of Seattle. And as you can see here, they, they do pre-cancer and early stage breast cancer um, pharmaceutical. So it's a great company. They had a change in their business in the last year or so, and they went from a centralized environment to a decentralized environment, which we're seeing lots of companies do today. Not a real big company, uh, only 10 users. They were larger. They shrank when they, when they made their change. And really what they were looking at doing was allowing people to telecommute, or what we like to say in the cloud industry, you know, engaging in mobility for, for their employees. So they went from a centralized environment where everybody, headquarters, everybody was coming in and really wanted to say, okay, in what we do today, uh oh, hopefully you guys are all seeing my screen already. Um, Summer, can you see my screen? Oh, let's show my screen. Okay, sorry guys. See technical difficulties. When Stephanie's not here, I break down. Um, hopefully everybody can see my screen now. Yep, there we go. Thank you, Fred. Um, so as I was saying, we're, we're seeing a lot of companies take advantage of technology, you know, not just cloud but all technology, in changing the way their businesses do business. So one of the objectives of this organization was to allow their employees to work from home. And what they did, they had a lot of ability to work from home. Um, and they were they had certainly outgrown their IT uh, advisor that they had on staff. So again, this was an, an environment where they were a larger company. They had servers and everything at headquarters. And with the change in their business, they decided they wanted to decentralize and go ahead and let people commute and work from home and become more of a virtual type of a company. Uh, they still have a headquarters, obviously, but most of the employees are now have the ability to work mobily. So we're seeing more and more customers do this. Uh, and again, this wasn't a big organization, guys. It, it was more, it was a smaller organization for us at Rapid Scale. Uh, they ended up with, I think we ended up with about 15 employees. And they had all kinds of challenges. Um, mobility being a number one challenge. Their servers were end of life or nearing end of life which means they had a capital expenditure coming up. And this is a real good key item for everybody on the call to, to be on the lookout for when you're talking with your customers and your prospects. Um, capital expenditures are something that we see more and more businesses moving away from. We certainly know that a lot of the CFOs that we engage with on a weekly basis are wanting to get out of those big capital refreshes. Um, as, you, as you all know, cloud is a consumption-based IT model. And what we mean by a consumption-based IT model is you pay 
for what you need. So those of you who have sat in on some other webinars that we've done, we've got a great one that we did last year, uh, transforming your IT from a cost center to a profit center. If you haven't seen that webinar, jump on that partner portal and do a review of it. That's a great webinar as well. It has a lot to do with, with what most businesses are looking at today and how do they take IT from the traditional role that they played, and it really is a cost center, right? That's what most CEOs and CFOs think around IT. And how do you make that more of a revenue generating environment? Um, and it starts with IT consumption, guys. So traditionally, if I'm on, if I'm a typical IT manager or IT director, um, when I go to my board or to my CFO or my CEO, and I say I need my budget approved, it's going to be for a three to five year budget. And when I'm purchasing that equipment, I've got to be a little bit of a forecast superstar in making sure that I'm going to buy enough equipment that we can grow on our, our sustained growth path if we have one or if we're static, that's great. Then we need to make sure we're buying enough to sustain us for the next three years. When we move to cloud, it changes everything because now we can use what we consume. So if we're flexing up because we see a big growth spike in the organization, it's really simple in the cloud environment, right? All you do is log in. If, if you have access to the portals, you can log into the portals and add more resources. If you don't have access to IT, if, if you've chosen, like this customer, to move to a managed environment with rapid scale, um, then what you end up doing is you call us and you say, okay, I'd like to scale up my organization. Uh, I'm adding 10, 15 users, two, three users. Um, I need more compute, I need more storage, I need more IOPS, I need to run more efficiently. And that's exactly what we saw with this particular organization. And it was a very simple solution on our side, guys. All we did was move their servers into the cloud and grant the employees remote access to those servers so that they could get inside of the servers and work just as if they would from their corporate headquarters. Um, and this is a fully managed environment, as I mentioned before. So big differentiator for all of our sales partners on the call today. Rapid Scale is a fully managed cloud provider, and that's really important for you guys to know. It, it's what separates us from the Amazons and the Azures of the world. Um, we can be very flexible, almost like a chameleon, if you will, in providing your customer exactly what it is that they'll need. This particular customer literally put all the IT into the hands of rapid scale. So they utilize us for all their management. Uh, they're utilizing us for a big key. And, and in the healthcare industry, guys, if you're not working with the healthcare vertical today, it is a phenomenal vertical. And if you are, sorry, I'm spoiling it and letting everybody else on the call know what a great vertical healthcare is. Um, but one of the driving factors in healthcare is HIPAA compliance. And more and more organizations are realizing, especially the smaller organizations, that they can't handle the HIPAA compliance by themselves. Um, literally, we have got dozens and dozens and dozens of BAAs out there. Those are business associate agreements where we're working with companies within the healthcare vertical. And Rapid Scale is in charge or responsible for their data, the security of their data, transferring their data in and out of the cloud and making sure all that data is encrypted while it's in transit and it's encrypted at rest as well. So with the HIPAA, from a HIPAA standpoint, you know, we will sign that business associate agreement with our customers and we'll bring them on board with us and we will not only take the responsibility for the security of their data as it resides within our infrastructure on our cloud, not as it resides on their desk, and that's a whole separate issue with HIPAA. But as it resides in our data center, we'll not only take responsibility for it, but we'll actually make financial um, guarantees to that organization that we're going to secure their data and we're going to meet or exceed the HIPAA guidelines when it comes to compliance around your data trans transmissions and your data security. So. That was a big driving factor when the customer was looking at multiple cloud companies. Our experience in the HIPAA space was something that set us apart with regards to some of the other providers they were looking at, and it was one of the reasons that the customer said, you know, Rapid Scale, you look like a great fit for us. We, we really are looking for somebody to manage our solution on a daily basis. 
and we're looking for somebody we can lean on for our HIPAA compliance when it comes to the sensitivity of the data that you'll be holding for us. So big drivers, not our typical type of a size of a customer. You know, they're less than 20 users today. We, of course, hope to see them grow, and we'd love to scale with them. But if they don't, it makes sense for the solution that they need today. And again, think about it from the executive leadership of this small organization. They no longer have to worry about how they're going to handle their IT. Now they've got, you know, one back to pat. I love that statement. A partner taught me that about two years ago. I used to use the one choke, one throat to choke. And he goes, it's much better if you say one back to pat. And I like that. Um, so great partnership with this pharmaceutical company out of the Northwest. Uh, we continue to grow in the Northwest as well as, you know, across the nation and internationally at this point. Um, so we can meet the needs of most of your clients, guys. Whatever they need, we can, we can help them out from a cloud standpoint. Um, with regards to this particular case study, are there any questions out there? Anything come in that I may have missed, Summer? Nope. Okay. We shall continue then. Um, Sorry, this mute. next one, <laughs> no worries. Uh, the know, next company looks more like what we deal with, guys, on a, on a regular basis. Um, this is a manufacturing and distribution organization. Um, and we have a lot of manufacturing companies on board with Rapid Scale today. Um, manufacturing is a key vertical for the cloud. So again, from a sales partner standpoint, right, I, I recognize a lot of the names on the call today. Thank you all for joining. And there are a few names, a lot of names I don't recognize. Um, but we're happy that you're here. So think verticals, guys. Vertical markets are the way to really, really take advantage of cloud solutions. Um, very specific verticals that work well in the cloud. Manufacturing is one of them. And a lot of people don't think about that on the outset. But if you take a moment and you think and you just step back and step away from that manufacturing company, that typical company, where you think, hey, they're, they're really not a whole lot of employees in there. Maybe traditionally from a, from a voice and data standpoint, they're, they're not really your sweet spot. But when we look at it from the compute side of the equation, manufacturing companies are running you know, as much as possible on automation and on servers and on compute. I mean, that's really what their goal is. Um, we have dozens and dozens of manufacturing companies domestically. We have international presence with some manufacturing customers as well. Uh, and all of them continue to move towards automation. Uh, they're really looking at how do we best take advantage of automating our systems and making sure that we're getting everything we need from an automation standpoint. Um, that being said, they're relying on all servers. Uh-oh, I got to, where did the displays go? Can, can everybody see my screen, Summer? Can you still see the screen? Yes, I can. Okay, great. Hopefully, ho there we go. Good deal. Yeah, okay. and everyone's uh, saying I might have <laughs> gone backwards in my questions. I'm just going to get out of the question, Summer, and let you, <laughs> let you manage those because obviously I'm not good at that. Um, okay. So, with regards to uh, manufacturing, sorry guys, I went on a little tangent there. Um, a lot of these customers are moving to full automation. Full automation means full servers and cloud computing. All of the all of the manufacturing lines are ran by these servers, by these computers, by these applications. Therefore, these applications are extremely important to these manufacturing organizations. You, you may find some, you know, mid-market, larger manufacturing companies who say we're really not uh, looking to move our production. We want to have production in-house. We're more comfortable with it in our data centers where we control it. We understand that. We have a lot of manufacturing companies who use us for disaster recovery and business continuity, right? They, they say, great, we'll run production at our plants, but if a plant fails, we want you guys to step in, pick up the compute load, and you know, distribute that compute load across multiple manufacturing plants. Or if we have a server die in a manufacturing plant, we want to fail over to rapid scales, disaster recovery and business continuity solution so that even though that server's down, we don't lose our production line. 
when you're talking with the CIOs and the CTOs and the MIS directors and the CFOs around manufacturing companies, they can always tell you exactly what it costs them if they go offline for a minute, for an hour, for a day, for a week. That's a direct revenue impact to these organizations. So don't shy away from manufacturing companies, guys. Think about manufacturing companies as a great vertical market for cloud computing. So back to this one in, in Illinois. This customer has been with us for a couple years now. Um, and what we started out with them was primarily hosted exchange. Um, their email is one of the most critical workloads, and that's a term that we use quite often inside of the cloud space is workload. It's a great term to use when you're looking at moving out an application from the customer's production environment. And the reason we say workload and not outsourcing is IT managers, IT technicians, IT administrators are ready to move workloads that make sense to move. Um, what we mean by that is, as most of you who've been on these calls with us in the past know, exchange is a big workload that people want to move, guys. It is a workload that IT managers don't like to handle. IT technicians don't like to support. It's a great workload to move off and take off of their plate. And obviously, Microsoft Office 365 has exploded over the last three years, and it just compounds that point of, of businesses of all sizes, enterprise, super enterprise. You know, we're talking 100, 200, 300,000 users moving their workloads off of their traditional IT production site and putting it in a hosted environment such as Rapid Scale or Office 365. Um, this particular customer, big, big concern with uptime. That was their number one reason that they were looking to move into a hosted exchange environment. Uh, the way they were set up, they had a 2010 platform running in their current environment. Um, 2010 to 2013, Microsoft did a lot of upgrades in 2013 to allow for resiliency and, and what are called DAGs, database, database availability groups, that allow you to spread that workload over multiple servers, over multiple data centers. That's one of the keys to our success around our hosted exchange solution. Um, is that we run it out of multiple data centers today, and as most of you who are on this call already know, we guarantee our customers 100% uptime. That's a big SLA for us. We stand behind it with serious financial penalties if we fail at doing that, and I'm knocking on wood at our new offices that uh, we have not had a failure in our hosted exchange platform. In other words, losing an entire data center has not happened uh, since I've been with the company. Uh, of course, there are little hiccups that happen here and there with all organizations. That's why it's a 100% uptime LA, SLA goal for us. You know, when we get on the phone and we start talking with true IT engineers, they're very quick to point out how it's impossible to have 100% uptime SLA. They're right. Uh, but for us, it's our goal. It's what we strive to do for our customer experience, and we've done a phenomenal job at it over the last five years since I've been here with the company. Uh, not that I've had anything at all to do with the uptime. That's all of our engineers and our back office guys. Uh, those are the guys who make all this stuff run, and they're the ones who keep it up and keep it running and keep that customer experience front of mind on a daily basis for the clients that you entrust to rapid scale. So when we, when we, they had us do the whole move, and here were the real critical pieces about why they wanted to go. Number one, they had had outages. And when they had outages, it hurt them from a company standpoint. Um, they came to us because of our 100% uptime SLA. That was one of the driving factors that had them choose rapid scale. As I mentioned, they've been with us for a few years now. They're extremely happy. We're looking at taking on additional services with them, with the partner who sold the environment originally with us. Uh, the next thing we're going to be bringing over from this particular customer is some infrastructure. Uh, again, they have workloads that are on newer servers that they're not ready to move yet, but they have workloads on older servers that are coming end of life. And they've made the decision as an IT team and as a company 
that as things come end of life, they're going to move them into a managed services cloud environment. It makes sense for them as an organization. It certainly has a big deal to do with the experience they've had since they've been with us since the, from the start, right? Again, not having those any major outages like they had had beforehand is great, gained a ton of confidence in the rapid scale team that supports them. And now they're ready to look at moving other workloads over. Um, this particular customer is a 600 plus user environment. I think they're closer to 700 today. Um, and, and the other key that we do for them, guys, that's super important, another major differentiator for rapid scale against our competition is the ability to provide a managed hosted exchange environment. And yes, when I say competition, I am discussing Office 365 and other competitors. So those of you who aren't familiar with Office 365, they don't offer a fully managed solution until you get into the enterprise size organization. And it starts at $5,000 a month for Microsoft to manage it themselves. Their entire goal around the Office 365 platform was to have Microsoft channel partners manage and implement the Microsoft Office 365 environment for those customers. So again, it's a channel model just like we have here at RapidScale, but the idea being that the Microsoft partner has the customer, they say, hey, instead of renewing your enterprise agreement licenses around Exchange, why don't we put you on this hosted platform? I'll take care of your migration from your current environment to your hosted platform, and then I'll do the day-to-day -day management for you and your team. Um, it, it's the model that they've built that they've had tremendous success with. Uh, and we've had tremendous success with it as well. Our biggest differentiation around management, and please, this is key. If you hear anything on this particular case study, this is the key. We will manage not only the exchange environment in the multi-tenanted platform, which, of course, we're doing for all of our customers. The underlying uh, production of exchange is what we'll manage. But we'll also, for a very small fee, pick up and manage all of their end users. So that's really key, guys. When we're sitting down and we're talking with IT directors, as a matter of fact, we've got one that we brought on just in the last quarter. It was 800 plus users. Um, I happened to be brought in by my channel manager and the sales partner on one of the calls with the IT director. And you know, we used the term managed, 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 and he just wasn't getting it. It finally came down to saying to him, look, you have 800 plus users. How many of your IT technicians, how many of your staff support that exchange environment and those end users? So for the exchange environment, it was one of his guys, you know, pretty much full-time job, uh, just keeping exchange up and running and, and running it in multiple data centers, et cetera. Um, but when we started talking about managing that help desk side of the equation, he had three people who pretty much most of their day was spent doing trouble tickets around Exchange and Outlook. Uh, real simple trouble tickets, ladies and gentlemen, like I forgot my password. I can't find this email. I can't get my I can't get my email to load on my new smartphone. I can't get my email to load on my tablet. So when we when we got to the nuts and bolts of the financials around this other customer, not this particular customer, although it's very similar, um, we showed them how for 800 users at $2 a mailbox, that's $1,600 a month, we could basically augment two of his help desk guys to work on other problems. And when he ran the math, it took him literally seconds to say, this is a no-brainer. I am more than happy to move this over and have rapid scale take this entire workload over. Very similar to our manufacturing and distribution company that we have the case study on today. They were about 600 users, and when we finally got them to understand what fully managed meant, they were, they were ready to pull the trigger and move it over to us. And again, this customer has grown over the years, not, not tremendously. They've added another 100 or so mailboxes since we've been with them. But the key here for everybody to think about is that upsell ability or cross-selling ability, right? Once we've got one product or solution with a customer, it's very easy for us to show them how to move other workloads and other pieces of that IT pie over to rapid scale. And that's what our team does for you guys. Um, and we're going to talk at the end of today's presentation about account management and 
our, our renewed focus on account management in 2015 and 16, and what that means to you as our sales partners. Um, so with regards to this particular customer, some, I know somebody had asked what the MRR was. Um, they're about $6 a user, 700 so it's about $4,200 a month, uh, give or take. And it's a great, I mean, again, guys, great solution for the customer. It made a lot of sense for them to make the move. A little bit of hesitancy in the beginning uh, because they were worried about what happens when my mail goes away and I, and I can't feel it and touch it anymore. Uh, the reality is once it moved out, you know, after the transition, which was extremely smooth, um, you know, we've had sit-downs with the customer where they've said to us, you guys are just doing a phenomenal job. Um, and they're really happy with the experience they've had. And, of course, we expect that we'll renew this customer when their initial three-year term comes up. Uh, any questions on this particular case study? Anything you see there, Summer? Yeah, there's three good ones, actually. Um, so the first one, can you be a little more specific on what workloads are typical um, or common in both manufacturing and healthcare? Okay, great. Uh, workloads in manufacturing and healthcare. So both, both environments, uh, a good workload to think about, disaster recovery. That's a workload, right? So if I've got a customer and it's, and it's very prevalent in both of these vertical markets, traditionally, and I'm just going to take a, a quick sidebar here for you guys and say traditionally the way we did disaster recovery in the IT space, you know, and, and again, guys, you have to think that you're a sizable organization here. You're, you're not 10 or 15 people. 10 or 15 people, disaster recovery is different than, you know, 500 people, so just keep that in mind. But when you've got a organization that, you know, they run and they live and they die on their applications and those applications being up and running, Traditionally, they've got their production running out of one data center, and then in a secondary data center where they're paying for rent, space, power, and pipe, uh, meaning obviously they have to rent the racks, they have to pay for their bandwidth, and then they have to pay for their power. That's your three components when you're co-loing equipment. Um, think about a secondary space, and then think about traditional IT. If I'm running, you know, 10 servers in my, in my production environment, I'm going to run 10 servers in my disaster recovery environment in case any of those servers in production fail, I need to be able to bring them up live in my disaster recovery site. Now, depending on the interdependencies of those applications and those servers, you may have one server that fails that takes down five, right? So all five have to come up on the other side. And then we're thinking recovery time and recovery point objective. How long can we be down before we des declare a disaster and bring it up in the secondary site? And then how much data can we lose from the primary site to the secondary site? Two key acronyms, RTO and RPO. Big workloads that customers are looking at moving out. And here's the, here are the two key components around DR and business continuity. Number one, a lot of customers who run with their core production when you go and you look at what they have in their failover site, typically it is older equipment that they refreshed from their primary production into the DR side of the house. In other words, I ran my server for four years and I decided, okay, I need to upgrade my primary server, so I'm just going to take my old primary server and I'm going to put it in my DR site, right? So I'm actually running on older equipment in my DR site a lot of the time, not all the time. And the larger the organization, you know, once you get into small enterprise, enterprise, they're not typically running on older equipment, but those mid-market and SMB customers are. So you're running in, in what we consider kind of an archaic disaster recovery and business continuity solution set. Technology has leapfrogged, right? And we have most of our customers today are running with uh, virtualized environments. And if they're running a virtualized environment, Part of our best of breed software providers that we use uh, allow us to do a lot more slick DR than what the traditional DR was. So one example is I can take all of the virtual machines that are running at the customer's production, I put my agent, my software application onto those production servers, I say replicate over to the destination, which is now rapid scale side of the house, right? And if their recovery time objective is four hours or more, I don't even have to spin the servers up, guys. I can leave the servers on the hypervisor in an off mode, and all the customer is paying for is the replications licensing and the storage that they're consuming on my side. 
Then when they declare a disaster, we spin those servers up. They've got snapshot images of the production side, and they come up very, very quickly. That's one big workload that customers are moving. Another workload that, that they always look to move is test and dev, right? Why, why buy servers that I'm only going to do testing and development on, and then when I don't want to use those servers, they sit there idle, or I turn them off, and then I turn them back on. So test dev environments are another big workload that all kinds of customers in all verticals are moving to the cloud. It goes back to that consumption model. I can spin them up in the cloud, I can use them, and when I'm done, I can spin them back down, and then I'm not paying for them anymore. So that's another workload. Uh, another workload in both of these would be ERP systems. Now we're getting into production side of the house solutions, right? ERPs, Enterprise Resource Planning, Enterprise Resource Management. Uh, these run businesses, guys, and we're seeing a lot of customers start moving that production to the cloud for several reasons. End of life of servers at their current production site. Um, they're looking for more resiliency and more redundancy than what they have in their current colo. Um, they're looking for more of a flexibility and a scalability inside of that ERP. If they grow and they want to add, you know, double their size, they can do it much more efficiently in the cloud than they can in a traditional co-load environment. What's our next question, Summer? Hopefully we answered that one for them. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so what is the financial penalty to rapid scale or the credit to the customer for anything less than that 100% uptime? Gotcha. Okay, great question. So with, with regards to rapid scale, guys, uh, it, and it's key, we'll, we're happy all of you can see our SLAs. They're on the rapid scale website, rapidscale.net forward slash terms. You'll see the terms and conditions and the SLA right there. You can read them at your leisure. Um, but basically, the, the real penalty that kicks in for us, if we put a customer down for a day, a full day, so that's eight hours that they cannot access their internet, be, sorry, not their internet, cannot access their mail because we failed, our servers totally crapped out and failed, we lost a data center, um, and, and of course there are terms and conditions around this with force majeure and natural disasters just like every other cloud company. But if something that's rapid scales fault, uh, one full day is one month credit. And we don't know anybody else in the industry who is offering that type of a credit to our customers. And again, the only reason that we have that kind of a financial impact to ourselves is because the architecture that our, our, our uh, lead engineers put together in building out this multi-tenanted environment. We're extremely confident in it, guys. It's redundantly built upon itself in each data center and then dagged out into multiple data centers. Um, you know, it, it would be a, a, an extreme event for us to lose it all the way around uh, the country and, and not be able to serve our clients. That's why we feel so strongly about putting that financial impact on us. Now, it's also very key to know that there are a lot of other things that come around mail, guys. Um, right? You have to have internet to get mail. So if their internet doesn't work, that's not me not being able to provide their mail. Um, their outlook, their client, whatever they're getting the mail on on their workstation has to work. If that fails, that's not me uh, failing to deliver their mail. That's them failing to deliver their mail. Um, spam filters, spam blocking, right? If they get blacklisted, that's not me. That, that's them. So what we're really talking about is the core underlying infrastructure and application. That's where, that's where the penalties hit rapid scale. And, and again, there are a ton of other items that can impact mail flow externally and internally to all kinds of customers. Go ahead, Summer. Any more? Yep, so this also ties into uptime. Um, are maintenance windows exempt from uptime? They are. But, but a, again, guys, I'm not, a, I'm not the engineers who build this. And I know I've got engineers who are on the call. so. I have to throw my disclaimer out there, and please don't pepper me with engineering questions. Uh, I'll do my best to explain it. Uh, with the database availability groups, it allows us to do maintenance across multiple platforms without impacting uptime. Um, if, we were, if we were to have some type of a major maintenance window, of course, we would, we would give our customers the notification that's required for our terms and conditions, and then that would not that would be uh, excluded from our uptime guarantee. If we, had to, if we had to do a major maintenance where we had to take the entire platform down, 
and we gave notification, that would not count as time down against us. All right, that's it. That's it. All right, let's get into the next one. Medical Rehabilitation Company. Um, this is a great, 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 great case study. Customer of ours out of the southeast. Um, this customer, I mean, literally, guys, huge growth, huge growth when we started talking with this customer. Um, and what they had on site in their production environment um, with their, M they had a managed service provider supporting them at the time. You see here that there are 13 locations, 200 users. Um, and this is not to be disrespectful to any managed service providers who are on the call with us today. Um, this particular managed service provider was a two-man shop, and they simply could not support this customer's growth. Uh, the customer was growing at a very rapid rate, pun, into, pun, pun intended, um, and they just couldn't keep up with them. So when we were brought in by our sales partner out of the southeast, uh, it really was kind of a, hey, I've got a customer. He's got all kinds of business problems around IT. I, I know that there's an opportunity here. I'm just not sure how to really position it. So they brought in um, Andrew Lauder. Those of you who know Andrew who work with him. Uh, Andrew's our senior channel manager running the, the southeast for us today. Um, they brought Andrew in. Andrew assessed the situation, got on a discovery call with the sales partner, and then really dug in and brought in the solution engineering team and, and everybody else from the rapid scale side to really look at what was this customer's, number one, what was their business challenges, right? And how, how was IT impacting those business challenges? Well, their, their hyper growth was certainly a, a great problem to have, but it was a challenge. Uh, and being able to keep up with that growth and bring on additional users in a timely manner and support those users and continue to grow and support those locations were all things that were extremely important to this customer. So it wasn't, hey, come in here and talk to this customer about mail. It was a bigger conversation. It was, hey, let's talk to this customer about how IT can benefit them because today IT is a, is a pain for them, right? Let's move it from being a pain to being an advantage and a benefit for this customer. Um, this is the whole shoot and match, guys. We came in and literally forklifted everything the customer had in their production data center um, and transitioned all of it to the cloud. So this particular client, we're doing their virtual desktops, we're doing their hosted exchange, and we're doing all of their infrastructure as a service. So rapid scale is a full-time, 100%, 24 by 7 by 365 um, IT as a service solution to this customer. Um, this particular customer, when we started with them, and we did our assessment, and again, guys, when we start looking at mid-market customers like this, um, and we look at the challenges they're having, we dig deep. We, we don't just dig at the top and scrape the surface and figure out uh, what can we go in and sell this customer. We go extremely deep with these clients, to, so much so that we actually took engineers and flew them out to these 13 locations and reviewed everything that they had in every location. So we did a full internal layer one assessment of all of their switches, their routers, their firewalls, everything they had at those locations. Um, the reason that we did that, quite simply, we knew that a lot of that infrastructure was aged out, as were a lot of their uh, physical servers that they were running, their host machines, if you will. Um, and we knew that if we were going to move them to a fully fully managed um, IT as a service solution that their underlying infrastructure had to support it, right? You can't bring a customer like this on board and have them have a Linksys router sitting at one of their locations. It's not going to work with virtual desktops, right? That's a residential retail type little router. We need to get a commercial grade router and firewall in there to make sure that they everything, all the traffic passes the right way. Um, this particular client actually came to us and said, look, we're, while we do this transition, while we come on board with rapid scale, we actually want full-time support. We want somebody, we want feet on the street, guys. We want somebody to be out here working for us that's your employee that we can have do everything that we need done from an IT standpoint. So we did that. We, we did staff augmentation for this customer, and we brought out one of our senior help desk folks, and we, we relocated him out to Florida. And he's been out there for a year. 
uh, over a year now, and he's getting ready to come back home to California because his job is completed. Uh, so it was a tra it was a transitionary change where we wanted the customer to be really happy. To do that, there were a lot of changes that had to happen, both at the physical layer and the virtual layer. The right way to do it was to put somebody on staff a rapid scale badged employee at the customer premise where we could get everybody up and running and get everybody comfortable with the new cloud environment. Um, so really, really happy to say that this customer is ecstatic. They, as the other customers we've talked about today, are a referenceable customer for us. Um, literally, guys, we've got dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of referenceable customers for you. Um, pretty much all industries, all vertical markets, we've got customers who are extremely happy with rapid scale that are, are more than willing to jump on a call at the correct time of the sales cycle to help close that business and bring that business over to you and over to rapid scale. Um, we also do, well, I'm going to talk a little bit product status calls when we get into our account management. Any any questions pop up on this one somewhere? And by the way, guys, this one bills right around thirty thousand a month. Summa you summa. Just, you just answered it. That was it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, great. Hey guys, one of the one of the funnest things, and for those of you who I haven't met personally or haven't chatted with before, um, twenty years in in the technology space, the majority of those was traditional telco voice and data services for a couple of companies. Um, and I got to tell you, the, the best part about what I do every single day at Rapid Scale and why I love being a part of this organization is it's all fun, man. It's all a whole new, whole new environment for all of us. Um, everybody on this call understands that cloud is the convergence of everything taking over. And because you're on this call, you know that this is where our business is going if you're in the technology space. Um, and there's nothing like getting down, sitting down with a client, talking to them about their business needs, understanding where they want to go, and then designing a solution for them that can help them achieve those needs through technology. Uh, it's exciting. It really is. And when you, when you think about that traditional customer with a couple of 13 locations, a couple hundred employees, you know, traditionally in the voice and data side of the house, that was a good account, right? Four or five K a month, maybe six or seven, depending on what they needed. Um, but man, when you when you start talking to them about their IT, it, it is at least one and a half to two times uh, the bucket, guys. And when you can bring on a customer that where you can do the entire entire kit and caboodle, move everything to the cloud, it is a great great customer, great revenues, which equal great commissions, and they're extremely sticky. Um, believe me, when you bring a customer's IT over to rapid scale or to another cloud computing company and you do it right, that's the key, guys. You got to do it right. Um, those customers don't go anywhere, and they don't they don't want to sign one year contracts. They don't want to do month to month. They want three, four, five year contracts because they don't want to move their IT again. Uh, great opportunity for everybody on the call, and I appreciate you all being on the call today for sure. Just a quick reminder that we are recording this call. And it, the deck will be sent out to everybody who was on the call today as well. Uh, the recording will be posted on the partner portal within 24 hours. So let's round it out and let's talk about account management, right? Because this is another key at rapid scale about what differentiates us from our competition, guys. Um, a lot of you know myself and, and Randy Jeter, our CEO, and, and may, you may know William Hyatt, our CTO. Um, we all we all come from the, we're all cut from the same cloth that it's our customers that make our business. It's that customer experience that keeps those customers with us, right? Under promise, over deliver to our customers. Work within work within processes that make sense for the business, and document those processes so that you can increase your quality and your performance every single time you bring a new customer on. Those are our goals here at Rapid Scale. It's our mission to be the most customer-oriented service provider in the industry. This is what we do every single day. Uh, Susan Eckel, our Vice President of Account Management, joined us at the end of last year, and she's building out her team. She took over the team that was here, and she's now expanding it. Um, Susan, Susan shares a background with myself and Randy. She is extremely focused on customer satisfaction and the customer experience. 
and our account management team is a big differentiator for us guys going forward. So we want you to know that account management doesn't start at the end. It starts at the beginning. When we're working with you with those prospective clients and we're trying to figure out how do we differentiate, how do we really set rapid scale apart from the pack, engage your channel managers to bring in the account management team. Uh, I can't tell you how many mid-market deals we've, we've pulled in over the top by getting Susan or one of our account managers in region to jump on that call and, and just do a quick overview on what account management is to us and how we believe in account management and what the benefits are to the customers when we do this account management. Um, it makes customers very comfortable and it makes them feel like, hey, I have a partner, not a vendor. And that's a key to this, guys. Um, your customers who are who are you know large SMB and up are not looking for vendors. They're looking for partners. They want somebody who they know will be there next year, two years from now, three years from now, and they want somebody who will help them with our our very last bullet point on this slide. You know, proactive, focused calls, appointments, quarterly reviews, tech reviews, and planning. Um, our largest customers rely on our level three engineering to help you know with next year's budgets and where they're going to go and what they're going to do. We wholeheartedly believe in in planning and strategizing with these customers. Um, again, this isn't your 10, 15 person environment. There's not a lot of strategy that needs to happen there. But when we start to talk, you know, 500, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 users, these are the customers who this particular add-on, this account management benefit is huge to them. So we like to bring it in early in the sales cycle and we certainly want you all to know that it's available for you when we're working with larger organizations. Um, not that we won't do it with a smaller organization, guys, we will. We're your partner, we want to bring this business on with you, we want your customers to be extremely satisfied and we want you to know that these customers will be managed properly for the long haul. Um, that's our commitment to you. That's our commitment to your customers that you bring us. And we believe it's one of the biggest differentiators that we have in the marketplace today. With that being said, um, our account management strategy and focus. Develop customer relationships through detailed process, bringing together customer profile, their goals, the service metrics. So pretty straightforward slide here, guys. Who's the profile? What's the objective and strategy? How do we align for that objective and that strategy? And if rapid scale doesn't do it, who's a complementary business partner of ours that we can bring in that can do it to give your customer what they're looking for? And of course, we always try to make sure that complementary business partner is somebody that you all know as well. And that if we bring them in and we make that, we make that introduction, we would actually have you make that introduction um, so that if you earn that business as well, you're compensated on it. Um, and then the execution ad, ad, advocacy and evaluation is the key. Um, you know, we, we put out, as most of you know, if you open a trouble ticket with rapid scale, you get a survey. And think about this. Trouble tickets mean something happened that you had a trouble with. Um, we're currently at a 97%, 97% satisfaction survey from customers answering the customer surveys when they had a problem or an issue, guys. Um, we think that number is phenomenal. We, we obviously strive to get to 100%. Um, I don't know if, if anybody can get to 100% and maintain it. I'm sure we'll hit it you know, a week here and a week there. But um, it is the passion of our team, not only, the, not only your channel managers and your sales and marketing team, your service delivery team, your underlying level three infrastructure engineering team, the help desk team, and the account management team. We all have the same goal, which is to provide excellent service to your clients. So we appreciate every opportunity you bring to us. And hopefully we're, we're standing up and carrying our, our side and our end of the weight there every time you give us that opportunity. Uh, with that being said, a couple of quick partner resources for you. Don't forget about your partner portal, right? We have got the Rapid Scale Cloud University. Um, more and more tracks going up every single month. I, I, I think there, there are more than a dozen on there now, and I know more are coming up more and more often. Uh, of course, we have the, the wholly contained email blast solution set for you, email marketing campaign, where Steph and her team will actually set everything up, 
all of the weekly, monthly newsletters are done. They're all co-brandable. You know, we'll even build it into MailChimp, which is what we suggest a lot of people use. Uh, you get 2,000 free email blasts a month. We will help you touch those customers. It's touching those customers and cross-selling them. That's the easiest business for you guys to bring over to the cloud. And we have literally dozens and dozens of success stories from partners who said, hey, we'll give it a try. You know, they started blasting their base, and next thing you knew, somebody responded and said, hey, I'm looking at Office 365. Can you give me a competitive quote? Right? That's the whole idea. You want your customers to know that you are converging into the cloud, and you are a trusted advisor for them in the cloud. More co-brandable collateral than you can shake a stick at. If you haven't been on the web, if you haven't been on the partner portal lately, check it out, guys. Vertical focuses, everything's on there. You can totally co-brand it with us and push that out to your prospects and your customers. And then cloud leads. Already 250 of you have signed up for the cloud leads platform. Um, and again, this platform takes 15 minutes of your time. We provide you with a microsite that will generate new leads from customers. Finding your microsite, it's yours. It's branded you. Nobody else gets it. You own it. Uh, and these are customers who, who go search on the web for desktop as a service or infrastructure or disaster recovery and business continuity, and they hit you geographically. Um, and next thing you know, they're filling out a white paper that pings you with a uh, little email saying that, you know, John Smith filled out a white paper on disaster recovery and business continuity in Phoenix, Arizona. Here's John's IP address and here's his email address because he has to give that to you to fill out the white paper. And if he's nice enough, he gave you the telephone number, right? That's a nice, solid, meaty lead for you to call into. All of this is partner enablement. It's all free of charge to you. Um, so take advantage of it. If you haven't and you want to learn more about it, reach out to your channel manager. They are here to help you and assist you. If you don't know who your channel manager is, reach out to Stephanie or I. We will find them for you. And if they're not around, I will help you personally. Um, that's our commitment to you. We are a channel-only organization, and we are here with you to, to work with you to grow your business and grow our business simultaneously. Um, that's it, guys. New address, 17872 Gillette Avenue. Corporate move happened last week. We're in new digs. If you are in the Southern California area or you're going to be visiting Southern California, we'd love for you to swing by and see the new, see the new location, see the collaborative workspace that we have today. Uh, meet some of the team. You can meet some of the help desk guys, the service delivery guys, the project managers. Um, we're all here, and we'd love for you to stop by. Talk to your channel manager. If you're going out to uh, Disneyland with the family next, you know, during the summer or during the fall, hey, swing by Rapid Scale. Make it a business trip, at least one day of it. Uh, any other questions, Summer? Two quick ones, yep. Um, and they can kind of go together. So for the partner, when you're talking about that third case study, what would the commission rate be on that 30K revenue? And then are up sales credited to the sales partner? I love it, I love it, I love it. Um, so for, and, and I apologize, guys, can't, can't disclose uh, commissions. Most of you are with one of our master agent partners. Uh, I know most of those master agent partners publish the commissions that they pay you from rapid scale, so it should be really easy for you to find it. Uh, if you're an independent partner and you signed a contract with us directly, um, feel free to reach out to me in an email. I will let you know what the commission is. But uh, let's just let's just ballpark it and throw a number out there. So on the 30,000 MRR, if your commission was 15%, which is very doable, you'd be looking at a $4,500 monthly commission check. Um, and yes, as customers grow and they add additional business and we cross-sell it, even if you're not involved in the cross-sell, um, if Susan's team goes in there and upgrades them from you know, mail only to mail and infrastructure and that account is tied to you, uh, you, are, you are eligible for that commission as well. Any other questions? All right. Nope. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Thanks, everybody, for joining the call today. Summer, thank you so much for uh, your assistance, as always. We appreciate it. Um, everything will be up on the Portman Portal within 24 hours. Reach out to the Rapid Scale Channel Management team. If you have an opportunity or you just want to be trained or you want to learn something new, we are here to support you guys. Uh, thanks all again for joining. 
Have a great rest of your month. Have a great short week, and we will talk to you all next month. Bye-bye.